Bonnie Tyler holding out for a hero on BBC Radio Shropshire. I hope you gave that some some gusto. Now, you might remember from a, a few weeks ago when Luke, you were nominated for an award. Yes. Weren't you? Film the House, yeah. And you went to Parliament. I did, yeah. How was that? Just um, fill us in on, on what you've what you've been up to since you were last on. Well, I say that I was a finalist. There are actually only two of us at the end final, so I suppose I came second, uh, which was quite fun. That's for best uh, young filmmakers around across the country. And each, um, I think the MPs pick the best films from the area and then they go through into final things. So that was a really fun event. Um, I was, well, I was shortlisted this year, so I was like the big end finals. I was a finalist last year, but I got told beforehand that I wasn't in the top, you know, up for yeah. winning. So. so it was progress. It was progress, yeah. And frankly, what was the food like and the uh, and the, the night out like? It was or the nice. day out? I don't remember much of what the food was like. I don't think I had much. <laughs> it, was, it was all right. It was nice. Right, that's one thing you've got to learn. Smash the buffet whenever it's free. I mean, fully destroy it. So you it top up your very, meat away. It was a very, very busy room. <laughs> yeah. So it was... Get, get into the food was a bit... <laughs> right, that was the problem. Mm. So, 15. you 15. Yes. So you've... You've now moved on to your next set of projects. I have done, yeah. Um, which are what? Well, I say I've got this one, which I'll be talking about shortly, Common Denominator, that I've just finished. Uh, but at the moment, I'm writing a, another short film. Uh, well, I'm actually stuck between two ideas. I will, I'll keep it vague. Um, because I've got two friends who are actresses that are working sort of reasonably professionally. OK. Uh, they've done a bit of TV, film... Uh, stuff so, and they're willing to travel down to work on a film this summer. So that gives me a few weeks to write and plan something. That, uh, there's nothing like time pressure <laughs> to to get the juices flowing. Yeah, especially during my mock exams, it's brilliant. <laughs> oh, good, good. And what well, you you are working with? Do you, you edit things for other people as well? Is uh, that right? Yes, I edit videos. I haven't done uh, that much at the moment. This channel sort of on a brief hiatus, but I work for comedian Andy Kind. And I've edit his videos and stuff for his YouTube channel. There'll be a lot more over summer, as well as this new web series he's doing, which I'm travelling down to uh, sort of direct and film. Uh, it's just a... Uh, I don't know how much I can say, actually. <laughs> I haven't it's asked exciting. Him, I've asked him whether I can mention it. I haven't asked how much I can say about it. So okay. I I'd better keep it vague before I get fired. <laughs> yeah, already. <laughs> right, well, let's let's start with project number one, because I've got a trailer for your, for your next project. So this is it. Yeah. Command Denominator is a short crime comedy about a deal gone wrong and a man who steals a briefcase full of money who poses as a maths teacher. Good morning class. I'm your new teacher, Gavin. The real maths teacher is taken away by the two other con men who are trying to collect this briefcase that the real con man has, but obviously they think the maths teacher is the con man. Where's the money? Well, how many times? I'm not the person you're after. Our film has Ryan Lloyd and Ryan Stewart, who played our two leads incredibly well, plus two stunning cameos from Andy Kind and Carl Pilkington. And here it is, the money we promised you. We worked really hard to produce this film. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So why would anyone pretend to be Gavin? No idea. <laughs> Mind you, he was a bit odd earlier. No milk in his coffee. So that's Con Man Denominator. Yeah. I like that play on words. That's that, nice. Yeah, I didn't write the title. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a brief overview of, of, of what's gone okay. into it and what, what, it, what it's about. I'll say first that it's a uh, GCSE coursework project. It's not entirely my work. I have directed it, but I've got a team of producers, uh, which is uh, Ashley Poole, Josh Allen and Alex Yusefi, um, who are all in my film class. It basically follows this... Um, there's this big deal which uh, takes place over the opening credits between Andy Kine's character and Carl Pilkington's character and a briefcase full of money is stolen by this mysterious character who ends up um, going undercover in a school posing as a maths teacher uh, to sort of hide this briefcase full of money all the while the real maths teacher is getting beaten up and tied up to a fence asked for the money because they assume that he is the con man that's a okay. sort of basic idea how long is it? It's about 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, so nothing too long, easy to sort of sit down for a bit of time. You know? So it's it's a combination of, of students, student actors. Uh, yeah. And then two cameos from two fairly well-known people. Uh, yeah. Um, I'd say with, with the actors, there are some people from the school who are involved as well as 
got in touch with Tadlop and a couple of people from there. And then there are other people who just worked for my grandparents' gardening company. <laughs> Fantastic. Who, who actually took the leads and I think did them reasonably well. So, so. <laughs> so is this going to be broadcast wider than, than just within your school's four walls? Because so, you, you've got a decent track record of, of pushing things a little bit further. Um, hopefully we will have it... We've got an online release on the 1st of July... It's on a separate YouTube channel to that which I normally use because it's not just my film. Uh, and so that will be on something called Mr. Middle Films, which is a new separate YouTube channel. I think I think I created a bit.ly link for it, so it's just bit.ly slash Mr. Middle Films, and it'll be up there yeah. when it's done. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea what sort of... how, how well it's going to work because it's a completely fresh YouTube channel, but hopefully Andy and Carl being in it will help it push it a bit. How do you go about getting contacts with with people like that? How, how did you become uh, an editor, for, for example, on uh, on somebody's YouTube channel? Um, well, Andy Kind is a comedian I went to see with my youth group uh, just over a year ago, and I went to I was just working on what was my first solo film project, Sixteenth Minute, which is obviously the one which I think I talked about last time, and. I thought, it's a comedy film, I'd like to get this comedian's opinion on it. So I brought the script, I actually made the mistake of sitting in the front row, which obviously <laughs> is not the best thing for the comedy gig. No, so you get torn apart for half an but hour. But it was brilliant in the way that I could then go up to him at the end, and he wouldn't mind chatting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I handed him my script, and then I think cause I got called off, and I didn't get a chance to write my email down or anything on it, and so I found him on Facebook, sent him a message... Then, a couple of months later, invited him onto my podcast. He's in the first episode of Please Be Seated, reviewing The Shining. And then, um, through the charity that we work with, Rock, um, Redeeming Our Communities, I got in touch with him about doing a, a comedy gig for us there. And he came down and did a show for us. And we've just sort of been in touch since then. About Christmas time, he sent me a message saying, Would you like to be my editor? And that's it, really. He must have impressed I somehow. So, yeah. <laughs> he must be very persuasive. Mm. In some way, do, do you, what sort of tactic do you use, if you've got any? I don't think I do really. I just just a load of front. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I didn't ask to be his editor. I don't even know. He, I must have sent him the films when it was finished because I don't remember him seeing any of my editing. Right. Films okay. Uh, I assume he had done. Otherwise, it was a real risk. Yeah, there. that was a punt. Um, but in terms of what, like getting the guests involved in my films things like that I'm, I'm always of the idea if you don't ask you don't get yeah. the worst thing you're going to get is a no so <laughs> why not ask them and how high do you set your sights because you've been doing this with, with a podcast you do as well haven't you getting some, some fairly well known people on do you, for how many messages you send out what percentage do you get in replies Ooh, um, that's quite difficult actually because I do I, I sometimes think send a message and forget about it instantly after. Um, so I probably say probably only about a tenth maybe that I get. Do I get? That's a pretty good hit rate. Um, yeah, I just send them. At the moment, I've been deliberately avoiding it because there has been a trend on YouTube recently with people making videos of sending direct messages to celebrities and seeing what they respond. Right. Okay. And I'm like, okay, they're going to get an increase in messages. I'm going to wait for that phase to die yeah. down. Give a couple of weeks, then I'll probably get back in touch with people because there are. They're, one of the people who I really, really want to get my podcast is Richard Curtis. Yeah, his new and, film out with Danny uh, Boyle yeah. this this week, I think. Uh, and I don't know how to get in contact with him. He's no. not he's on any social media or anything, so I'm going to try and find out how to do that. Yeah, uh, because you <laughs> you have a uh, and for you know a a boy of your age, what I will say is a strange, and I am going to say strange, fandom of Richard Curtis rom coms. Yeah. <laughs> how and why? Oh, Blackadder. <laughs> right, okay. It. Well, Blackadder I can accept. Yeah, it's it when was... you start moving into into the Love Actuallys and things that yeah. I think you're not quite in the target demographic. No, it was when I watched Blackadder and then I found out all these other things he wrote. He wrote my favourite episode of Doctor Who, Vincent and the Doctor. Um, and then I was just like, this guy's a really good writer. So I looked into his other things. And yeah, I, I think I'll, a Richard Curtis rom-com. It's not, I'm not the target audience. I no. think they're really entertaining, though. I think About Time is possibly the greatest film ever um, <laughs> that's a controversial opinion <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a good film though okay we'll, we'll accept that and not damage your credibility in any way we'll just skirt <laughs> over it what, what about 
the um, the, the accusation that it's all a bit posh. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I haven't really thought of it. You know, just, just enjoy it, it's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, what, what was it that got, got you hooked on Blackadder, by the way? Because, again, this is probably... Pro- haven't been broadcast since 20 years before you were born. It's really weird, actually, uh, because when I was a lot younger, I had a fascination with history, and I was also a big fan of Mr Bean. And so I was aware there was this show with Tony Robinson from Time Team yeah. alongside <laughs> Rowan Atkinson, where I realised being, like, eight and nine, eight or nine interested in Time Team's another thing. I, yeah. I came from Dad, but... Um, uh, so I was aware of the show for ages, and then I think I asked Dad when I was about 12, 13, I was like, am I allowed to watch it yet? <laughs> and then yeah, maybe just about, yeah. That was it, really. <laughs> Who else do you do you admire? Who's, who's on your list of, of dream gets for the podcast or, or, or films? Um, I, well, one person I really admire is dead, so that doesn't really work. That's going to um, be a barrier to them yeah. appearing. Who's that? John Hughes. Okay, yeah. Um, but... Obviously, way, way big is people like Tarantino. I think he's... Yeah. <laughs> what I've seen that he's done. Um, I don't know, really. I have I genuinely get in touch with so many people. Um, I've always wanted to have a chat with Anthony Head from Buffy. Okay. Because um, he's he just come across a really nice guy and we share some of the views on animal rights and things. That I think it's right. really nice. <laughs> nice chat. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite interesting that you, you seem to pick people rather than... You know, it's it's interesting that you you think you'd had a good discussion rather than just going for you know a list wow factor factor names. Uh, yeah, because I feel like it it would cause a better podcast than just having a chat with someone who I might not necessarily know so much about. Yeah. Um, because I think to have someone who's truly interested as opposed to someone who's trying to get the listeners try to get the views is probably more interesting to them as well. Um, there is someone who I've. Um, been trying to get in touch with oh no I won't say just because I'm in arrangement never mind <laughs> okay w- watch this space yeah, for that it's, one yeah it's probably not a name that most people recognise anyway but the guy who wrote a book a fascinating story that I'm in touch with but I haven't heard anything back in a while okay. so I'll... I will I will ask you more about the film uh, coming up we're in conversation with Luke who's a 15 year old filmmaker from Shropshire doing brilliant things <laughs> Jack Savaretti, Love's on the Line on BBC Radio Shropshire. It's the 7 o'clock show. I'm Mark Elliott. And uh, we jump out late. Shropshire filmmakers, only 15. And uh, I mean, how many films are you on now? Oh, um, ones that I have made sort of myself. I I count my main two as 16th Minute and Common Denominator. So, okay. But I've done like little stuff with my granddad for years. That's what Mr. Middle in the Mr. Middle Productions yeah. was off. Which wasn't my idea. My, my group in film decided to sort of name it after the cringy film that I, <laughs> that I started with so can't escape that now is he still involved by the way um he is yeah um the con man is obviously the first one because it's school that he hasn't worked on but yeah i i we work on stuff together quite a bit even it's just like him lending me equipment but we've we've sort of chatted about whether we're gonna make a return to mr middle okay and see, uh, see what we can do there but yeah, I haven't spoken to him yet, but I hope about it. But I'm hoping to see whether he can help me with my film in the summer. So if he's listening, maybe okay. He's well, we'll, we'll count that <laughs> as you having asked. Then <laughs> okay. <laughs> now uh, these these are basically mostly comedies, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Is the comedy in the visual, or do you write jokes? Um, depends what parts people find funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, there's a recurring gag in Common Denominator about the fact that he has his coffee with no milk, uh, which I do. So okay, but people find that odd. Uh, so I was like, I, I, I was like, it's it'd be such an, a funny thing. Hopefully, with the fact that he's sort of doing all these odd things, and the only thing that people focus on is how he has his coffee. Yeah. I don't know how how that plays, but we've got uh, we've got a guy getting tied up to a fence in the film, uh, which is probably weird for the people walking past. Um, <laughs> It was the day of a school show rehearsal, I think. So people were sort of walking past, seeing a guy tied to a fence, and us filming it. So I don't know how that. <laughs> Writing comedy is hard, whether it's whether it's visual humour or or jokes. It's tough to write comedy. Wait for someone to tell me whether it's funny or not. Yeah, what I've done. <laughs> and there is always that nervous weight, though, isn't there? Oh yeah. Or you're hoping for a laugh. Do you get nervous when your films are, are, are screened? Uh, a little bit. I'm. It's it's more like the production and the scheduling that really stresses me out because uh, we were originally were booking this this slot it was for a different film which we were very close to finishing and 
just say, I'll just say production's been a little bit delayed. So I managed to push Con Man forward. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly scheduling. Like, I'm. Like, what I always look forward to the filming. But what I really realise is the bit that I enjoy is the editing, where I actually know everything's done. Right. I just, you know, I think you can make a... Because that's a bad bit film better. a lot of people find quite laborious. Mm. I find with, with editing audio, it's quite... It can be quite frustrating at times. Do you, you, you find yeah. it quite therapeutic? Uh, video more than audio. Right. With, with the podcasts, it's all right. But that's harder and tougher because, like, my podcast is like two, three hours long. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to cut them down to like an hour. They can be all right, but that that you have to probably sit down and do it, you know do it with that. But with like short films, it's enough. I'm like, I'll do a scene now, uh, you know. And I've started editing the scene sort of a little bit out of sync sometimes. Which so I sort of edit and produce the video files of each scene and then put them together afterwards. Which right, works all right when I'm doing that. If I notice a mistake, then I have to go back and redo each scene file, and it's, it's all hassle there, but. I think it works okay at the end because what I'd hate is it lagging on the editing software yeah. and to then base syncing my audio up on it lagging. And it's, been yeah. completely it's a nightmare. Horrible. Yeah, And I, I guess then it, you've got to be quite brutal to get things down to 10, 12 minutes. Yeah. Are you good at culling your own work? Um, I don't know. There's There's some stuff which... There's one scene which I really enjoyed writing for Command Denominator... And when we got to film it, we were like, it was too difficult. It was quite a rainy day. We were like, you know what, we'll cut it. And so that wasn't even filmed. Uh, but some other bits, which I quite enjoy doing, I'm like, I, at the end, I'm like, I'll cut it. Yeah. <laughs> it's often the best gags, the bits which when you're writing it or you're working on it, you're like, this is hilarious. That you suddenly get to watch it and you're like, it doesn't work. Like, yeah. It doesn't fit the tone or it just doesn't... Or it um, doesn't look as funny yeah. as it reads. Like, there was this whole scene where, because he's a con man and he you might be expecting, like, poison in his drink or whatever where he got his coffee he originally got out of straw and like did it through a straw and like wiped the straw there's gonna be a whole sequence with that and then at the end we'll just like cut the whole thing out so, yeah um but yeah that's it's fun um to edit really but it can go on for a while like the documentary i'm working on at the moment which is the first serious thing you've done yeah um it's called all together alone once again, the titles, not my. <laughs> ask other people. Who's coming up with your titles? Uh, it's actually my friend Freya, who, uh, who incidentally won the thing at the House of Commons. Oh right, uh, okay. And basically, I just send her an email, and like ten minutes later, she sends Come me the title, title for this. Because <laughs> I've been I've been sitting down often for hours, or for you know thinking over days. What do I do? And then yeah. I just <laughs> he texts her, and it comes through. So. So that seems to be my, my go-to. <laughs> <laughs> the titles are always hard to come up with. So what's what's that about, and how have you gone about doing that? Um, uh, well. Once again, it's a, a coursework project, and I am making my own projects as well. It's just it's easier to you know yeah. say it's schoolwork. <coughs> yeah, and um, why why do extra for school if you're frankly doing it anyway? Yeah, um, well that was my thing with this really. A lot of us supposed to be made in lesson had half term. I was like, I'll just film a lot of it in half term. Yeah, and I came back, and it was a half an hour documentary. <laughs> um, and basically, what that does is I because through a a charity we work with Rock um, Redeeming Our Communities there's a lot of people who are sort of vulnerable or experience isolation who are actually very open to sharing their stories so I spoke with them about isolation and the main name was can young people get involved in helping reduce it and I'm for like the end uh, part of the film which actually I think the end part it's like 20 minutes up so it was a big chunk of it uh, we get the young people and older people basically everyone of different ages different backgrounds to all sit around a table and discuss isolation so is it older people that are isolated by and large that, um, that you focused on not really no, no. Uh, because people assume older people yeah yeah uh, but actually there's now so much out there for older people you're looking at like middle aged people who've got nothing right so <laughs> um, those people caught in the middle who maybe go out to work but don't speak to anyone between finishing work and going to work the next day yeah um, sort of and there's a lot of things also got people who've opened up about their like addictions and how that's led to Why? Isolation. So I, I was quite surprised at how open people were. And so I think it's got a good result. The only issue is now my teacher wants me to cut it down to 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> and that's, uh, there's a lot of points in there which I'm really worried about cutting out. So I don't know what I'm going to Maybe make two cuts. Yeah. Uh, but we screened it, uh, well, not like a public screening. We screened it to the people involved. Um, Last week, I think, or the week before. Were they happy with it? Uh, they enjoyed it, yeah. Because when it's real people, you've often got a, you've got a responsibility to them, haven't you, to do yeah. their stories justice? Uh, there was there was one person who 
I cut a lot of what he said out. He wasn't a fan of that. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> but like all the points that were said by him and by some other people who I cut a lot out were really good points, but they didn't fit the flow and the structure. Yeah. Um, like often I'll ask a question and then ask me a question back and ask more, and it just like <laughs> it just yeah. didn't didn't flow as well. Um, but I think. Mostly people enjoyed it. We had the uh, the mayor of Wellington was in it, and he came along to the screening, and he quite uh, liked it. Um, we just showed it at our at our rock centre. And how did you get involved with the charity? Um, it's one that it, well, it's a it's a national charity, but uh, mum and dad started off the first one in the West Midlands, which is our Telford centre. Oh, wow. um, it, it was originally because our church used to be the same place as the food bank. It was just getting people the you know, a cup of coffee or whatever while they're waiting for their parcel and it slowly developed to get them a meal and then just started up as its own separate thing as people would just come for community. Yeah. But it's something you <coughs> clearly you've grown up with but bought into. Something that's important to you as well. Yeah, um and I think it's a lot more helpful than the stuff in school where they you know, they teach you the lives that you shouldn't lead, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Or actually when I mean you know, I'd like to think that in learning that, I know, yes, I won't do, you know, drugs, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think seeing people on the other side of it and actually people sharing their stories and just being in the atmosphere of people who've gone through stuff like that. Yeah. It's in, obviously in the controlled space because parents are on the charity. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really sort of nice place. But these, these things do exist, yeah, and don't they? There's no point hiding people from it because yeah. all you're doing is making it worse, really. Yeah. Um, I think that's when we came up on, on topic with really... Uh, in the documentary as well, uh, but I'll I won't say too much more about that. <laughs> How is the podcast going? And uh, are you still putting out regular stuff? Um, well, I've I've recorded one more <laughs> since the last one. That's I'm trying frankly, to get, uh, you know, I, I know you've been doing other things, but I'm <laughs> going to say lazy. <laughs> it, it, it's because in the last series, I basically used up almost all of my contacts that I already <laughs> had. So now it's trying to get new contacts. I've recorded one. I'm going to stay hush on the guests that I've got until then I'll announce them all. You're getting That's very good. good. You're going you're to be a studio's dream. You don't give anything away. <laughs> this is good. No spoilers. Um, but I have guested on a recent podcast. I did. Have you? Uh, it hasn't come out yet, I don't think. it's. I did three episodes on a show called The Room Minute, where they analyse the film The Room one minute at a time. Oh, uh, okay, and yeah. each minute, you know, they, we discussed about half, for about half an hour. It was quite fun. I mean, that is endless content. I've always wanted to do my own Move By Minute podcast, but considering I can't, I've recorded one episode of my own show in six months, I don't yeah. think I can do one minute at a time yet, but it's a really nice community, and I just get, people get in touch with me, or I get in touch with them and say, you're looking for a guest? And How are you with criticism? Have you encountered much? Um, bits. Uh, I, very little, like, blatantly from it, um, like, don't get too much like in YouTube comments or anything there. But I, before I release the films, or just after I've released them, I tend to send them over to different people. Um, last year, the 16th minute, I sent over to Trev from Trev and Simon. Oh, right, um, okay. And he gave a, a nice review, but a lot of sort of negative things as well, so a really balanced review. And he didn't realise I was 15. <laughs> so right, okay. It, it was sort of on a professional level, all these different things on it. And that's um, almost a good thing it, though, isn't it? It's good, yeah. And I, I said that. I, I just sort of said, thanks, i got a lot, lot more to improve on since I, you know, I'm 15, I've got many more years to do it. And he was like, do you want me to change it? And I'm like, no, because that doesn't, you know, the, my age doesn't change the content of the film. No, no. Um, and same and thing, as long as it's constructive. Yeah, it it's was. It's only going to help, isn't it? And I've looked back on it several times since. I've been like, actually, it's a really nice review. <laughs> um, because he says, you know, these bad things, but it's lifted by this. or uh, So it, it, it turned out... Um, quite good there the other thing is there's a guy called Dave Shelton who was a National Lampoon writer he wrote an episode of Everett Lewis Raymond I think and he does little bits in Hollywood and stuff okay I had him on my podcast I send um, I sent my last film over to him com- the early cut of Command Denominator and he said some good things a lot of you know areas to improve which is what I asked for yeah. so I'm not it's not a it's amazing that these people will take the time though isn't it yeah it's quite you don't need to no well like with the release of uh, Command Denominator um, almost straight after I finished it, I sent it over to Milton Jones, and he said something like, "Proves the funny side of some teachers watch and learn, or something like that." And that was like within a day. I sent him the little video. He watched it, and, sent it back, you know. and these these people are just available on Twitter, Facebook Messenger. I wouldn't suggest everyone bombarding no, them. No, no. 
once you don't ask, you don't get. You yeah. know, it's a, and, and that that's just how it works. I sent things to a lot of people. I can't remember how many of them respond. I've sent comments on it to Trev and Trev and Simon. I don't know if he's seen it or anything yet. Are you uh, doing any more competitions or anything like that? Um, not really. But I have got this uh, young artist award that I yeah. talked about, uh, which is really weird because I was just checking my IMDb page and I saw that I'd been listed for this award, and I went on there, researched it. Turn, I thought it was a fake thing at first, uh, best producer. And so I'm looking to this young artist thing. It's a it's a Hollywood thing ran that's ran for over 40 years. They've had they've nominated and awarded people like Johnny Depp and oh there were loads. I don't know. <laughs> I never can remember. Uh, but they were look, like a big list of all these people that they've given awards to in the past. Where did they find you? I don't know. <laughs> I emailed them. Hollywood uh, has eyes and ears everywhere. It's just weird because there's a. I, the weird thing about the 16th minute is, like, I don't, like, I know I produced it, but I don't really know how much of what I did counted as the role of producer yeah. and how much counted as director. So the fact that I, I apparently did good at producing, yeah. all right, fair enough. Take it. <coughs> um, what happens next for that? Uh, the ceremony is next month. I think they're sending us a live stream. Can't really afford the short notice to go to Beverly Hills where it is. But, that's that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm hoping they'll send us a live stream and it'll it'll be exciting really. I think it's a good thing to put on a CV. If you can do your first acceptance by, by video <laughs> because I've got more important things to do than turn up to your ceremony. <laughs> that will be that will be making it. So <laughs> all of this will at some point or is already available on your YouTube channel. Uh yeah. My channel where uh, the the stuff that I do mostly now, although it's rarely post them there. I used to post all the time, like, silly things. Now I try and put effort in them. Um, but that is Bottle O Productions. There's a whole reason for that name that I can't bother to go into. Um, and that's where most of the stuff is. Command Denominator will be on Mr. Middle Films, which should be soon on the channel section on my thing, or it's bit.ly slash Mr. Middle Films, I think, for the bit.ly link. You're always looking for people to work with as uh, well. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess you would be a big advocate of if you fancy making a film, just get up and do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I'm always looking for stuff to do, people to work with, like any little projects. I've, you know, I go under the name Luke Allen for a lot of things um, because Allen's my middle name. Okay. That's just how I started. I don't know why. Um, and so I've now got an email address which is lallenfilm at outlook dot com. So that, <laughs> you know, people can send us stuff there. Um, I don't know exactly what I in the realms of being able to help or do things, but if anyone's got like a podcast or a film that they'd be interested in a hand or showing me how the ropes yeah. work, you know, I'm looking for all. So aside all from experience. that and mock GCSE exams, is there anything we haven't covered that you're currently working on? <laughs> um, I don't know. Work experience next week, but that's nothing to do with this. I ended up at my primary school. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be a little bit of time out, mm. Luke. It's always good to catch up with you, and next time you've got 101 things to, to tell us about, <laughs> do. And you can find all his work on YouTube.